Folks podcast. <laughs> My name is Amy. I'm joined today <laughs> by other Amy. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say Hi, Carmen. Carmen. You're supposed to say Carmen. That's Cosette. Yo. Um, uh, Selena. That's wow, you, you were forgotten. <laughs> I was. Our topic today is Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. No, it's one. Queer Eye. It's just Queer, queer eye. eye for the Straight Guy is the old oh, one. Oh, fuck, I can't do this. It's <laughs> just <laughs> Queer Eye. Okay, just Queer Eye. My bad. It rhymed, though. It was so catchy. I know. You that's tried. You tried so that. hard, Carmen. You you did You did okay. Oh, you did thank okay. Thank you. <laughs> C's make degrees, yo. Don't forget that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think you're the person who should say that. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wow, Amy, that was low. You know what? Oof. Now I'm just I'm gonna. Sorry. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Mm, you just wait. I'm gonna that one. Okay. I'm gonna All right. It. So. Like Coco said, we are going to talk about Queer Eye, season one, from Netflix. Um, so we all have seen it, so there will be Mondo spoilers, so if yeah. you have not seen it, please go watch it on your own time, and then come back and listen to this. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. It so is. the first thing I want to ask, did any of you ever see the original Queer Eye for the Straight Guy? No! No, no. I was, uh, I was, well, I don't want to say I was too young. But, like... I was almost too young, and you're a few years younger than me, so you were definitely too young. Yeah. Well, like, when it came out, I'm looking... Google is telling me also when the old version was out. When it first released, I was 10. So I would have been, so like, 14. Like, it's not... It Like, I mean, if it's... Yeah, assuming it's the same format as Queer Eye, it wasn't inappropriate for me to be watching... Because I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I could be totally wrong about this. But assuming it's very similar to Queer Eye in terms of what they discuss and and all that, it was perfectly appropriate. It's just, like, I feel like even though my parents aren't, like, super queerphobic, like, I think they would hear Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and even if they don't know what it means, they hear that title and they'd be like, ha you shouldn't watch this. Um, but it did come out at the same time you had, like, the whole Will and Grace thing going on. Oh, which they do were a lot Will more into it, they, so. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like they would have heard that title and been, like, red. You know, I would have also just wanted to watch reality TV. Yeah, that was the like, kind of beginning of reality TV, so it was also, yeah. like, a new sort of thing that was coming yeah. out. Well, I re- I think I remember seeing one or maybe two episodes as a kid, and kind of thinking back to it, it was definitely more stereotypically gay than our oh, current iteration. Yeah. Very much so. But, fun fact, the guy who did all the cooking stuff from the original is now the host of Chopped. Oh, oh wow. bitch. Yeah. Ta-da. That's good to know that they, um... Like, all got places and not just, like, Carson Kressley? He did yeah. not get places. He's, like, a D-list celebrity No, now. but he's he's a judge on RuPaul. Is yeah. he? Is he? Yeah, he's a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, because whenever I yeah. see him in other things, he's always just, like, a D-list celebrity competing in something. Oh, yeah, no, no. Oh, he, I mean, like, dancing with the stars. He's a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. No, it eventually. was uh, celebrities who can't cook. He is oh. now. <laughs> All right, so I think for our Carmen Explains things, oh, what? Already? Yes. we're going to start off with it. Because in one minute, I would like Carmen to explain what each of the Fab Five do. Oh, I, what, think, I oh, don't even know their names. Oh. We have Anthony, who does the food. Okay. You're just going to explain it. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to because I want her to explain in oh, detail. Okay, hey, I'm just going to Google Queer Eye. Cast. Uh, yeah, keep googling. Okay, I just I just need a list, a list of their names. Oh, here we go: Anthony, Jonathan, Caramo, Caramo, Tan, and Bobby. Yep. Okay. okay. Bobby Burke. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you ready? Well, who are? Why are we all pointing? All right, Selena. What? Oh, oh song. yeah. Jesus. I forgot to. Price two episodes Carmen in a row. explains things. Carmen explains things. Please explain the show that we have all watched to us again, please, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> that was better than last time so you know what i'll take was it. it i mean you did carmen explains things carmen explains things so that's, that's basically you that's got the it song yeah that's the yeah. song yeah you got it all, all right. right are you ready for this carmen yes okay. don't look up what they do I, I, it's just their names okay okay i've verified yeah i'm looking it's just their names okay and Go. Okay, well, Anthony does the food, obviously, because Amy already said that, you banana. But, um, but what he, I what does he teach them about food? I have no me? idea that f- you can't eat your feelings. I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so he just he shows them how to make uh, nice 
meal to impress their dates or something. I don't know. There was one episode where he made a hot dog to sell at some fundraiser. <laughs> so that was cool. <laughs> Jonathan Van Ness. He is awesome. He has big personality, very gay. He does makeup and hair, which, I don't know, matches that, you know, stereotypical valley girl thing. Caramo oh Brown. Um... Oh, he's the social media guy. He has one of the hardest jobs, as well as Bobby Burke, who completely revamps the entire house in, like, three days, whereas this guy puts fucking peppers on a plate. <laughs> and, and France takes oh my sh- fucking God. shopping the and uh, gives them a new wardrobe. So all together, they make one complete human. <laughs> that's it! <laughs> wow. Jesus. That's this one guy puts peppers, peppers on a plate. <laughs> Holy saying, shit. Like, Why is there so much hate for Ed? Because that is what he does. Because he literally just goes, here's an avocado, guys. No! <laughs> that's not true! No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody loves Anthony. Nobody gives enough props to fucking Bobby. Where are Bobby? Bobby does so much <laughs> fucking <Bobby>. work. Yeah. <laughs> D- Carbon <laughs> murders <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just he shows them how to make one meal, and then, like, you can go on the internet and get a bajillion recipes, right? It's yeah, but, like, find... will men do that? Well, Think about, about it. I, like, saw it. your boyfriend boil tofu. <laughs> <laughs> like, for <laughs> real. Like, <laughs> they they go on the he internet. very much oh could look up a recipe a lot easier than he could, like, figure out what styles fit his body type and how to make a friggin' social media thing for his business and bullcrap, right? Like, it's Mm -hmm. definitely the one that, if we had to get rid of one, that's probably the one that everybody would agree could... Be, be swept to the side a little bit. But, uh, feel but like, like healthy But, like, so looking important. up recipes is... Uh, uh, like, having learned it, learned how to do it firsthand, I feel like makes them more motivated to make it again, especially yeah, because perhaps. Anthony usually takes... Like something from their childhood, or their oh, like, okay. like makes it important to them. Okay. Like whether it's like their culture or their childhood or like something. Like he he finds a reason to like make them want to make it. Yeah, Carmen makes a good point though. If you had to get Thank w- rid of one of the Fab Five, who would it I be? I was gonna say I was gonna ask that actually because <laughs> I think I agree with Carmen. I think Bobby. All I, the way. <laughs> oh, oh, what a joke! Oh, that was God. a joke. We were yes, all about to backhand Coco. That was oh, a God. joke. I would never. J- like hurt Bobby that way. He I, does a lot of work. He does he the works most very work. Hard. Yeah. I, I would joking. get rid of Anthony, but second would probably be Karamo. What? But Karamo is so important. No. Okay. To be fair, there is only that one Karamo. episode with the comedian where he made him a web page. Other than that, I'm but not he's really like, sure hey, what he does. How are your feelings? And he's they're like, like, my feelings are bad. He's like, let's oh, talk about yeah. your feelings and address them. Yeah. Okay. And it's, so it's kind of like. Like, I think his title is, like, culture person, but it's really more oh, like, hey, maybe talk about your feelings one time. It's and more like, like lifestyle. Yeah, like, like lifestyle yeah. and, yeah. like, whatever important thing. No, I mean, like, I wouldn't want to, but if I had to, my second would probably be, because I think grooming, the clothing, and the place you live is a really good base point yeah. to start yeah, from. But but who would you guys, yeah. if you had to get rid of one? I mean, I would pick Anthony, but I'm not, I feel bad for him. <laughs> I because know. everyone makes I'm the same. I would oh, pick yeah. Anthony, but at the same time, I support Anthony. You like, feel yeah. bad because he looks oh, just yeah. like Dakota. No, disclaimer. He we... doesn't look like Dakota. <laughs> he does. Okay? So no, he does. Dakota's way he does. cuter. He doesn't look like Dakota. They, Are you kidding me? Like Literally, Dakota I, like I was re-watching it recently no. with Jacob, and no. Anthony came on the TV and went, oh my god, it's Dakota. And when he <laughs> smiles, Selena, he looks exactly no, like No, that's not what Dakota. I Oh God, okay, hold on. I have to look up pictures of Dakota. Yeah, if he had a little rat and sash, Dakota would look exactly like no. him. <laughs> oh. oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. Are you not allowed to say that? Yeah, it's illegal. Okay. You're not allowed to say that. I'm <laughs> calling the police, Carmen. Oh, oh my God. God. Is this Dakota? Okay, what does Dakota look like, you guys? He looks <laughs> like Antony. Exactly. Oh you guys want to see Dakota? Just look up Antony Paro. Horowski, and, and you will see. A oh my god! Okay, so Dakota looks like a cute little twink. What does Anthony look like? I, Dakota, <laughs> oh my god! He looks like a little twink. Yeah, Anthony looks like a little twink, twink. and like, so does like, Dakota. Coco, could you please explain to Carmen what a twink is? How do you not know? Is that like a How do you not know what a twink? twink. A teeny bopper. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, not far off. Okay, that's me. So like. <laughs> Oh my yeah, God. So a 
a twink is like in um in like gay men culture, a twink is like a like like skinny. small sort of effeminate. Usually, um, like the stereotypical image of a twink is like clean shaven, small, sort of like femme, like well, <laughs> like well, came up with Twinkie, a small finger shaped sponge cake with white synthetic cream. <laughs> that's filling. exactly what Go a twink is. Urban you know what? You're right. <laughs> oh, there. Oh okay, my yeah, God. See now, a straight up. Name Carmen name. went to <laughs> Google image search with twink, <laughs> and there's like borderline gay porn we're looking at right now. That is a fully. Oh my God, that's man. actual gay porn. Yeah, <laughs> look, that's actual oh, gay shit. porn. Do you know what a twink is? Ah! <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh my god, I just saw a penis. Wow. <laughs> look, look what happened. Oh my god. It just goes, it just goes again. <laughs> it just, it just, it just goes. <laughs> so now that everyone knows what a twink is. Okay, oh okay, god. okay, we are dear brain. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna have to like restart Okay, this. okay, no, 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 no we got this. this. deserves we to be this. this. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what was your impression of the Fab Five in the first episode? Like, what did you think of each of them? them. I love them. I love them. Everyone loves Jonathan the most. I love Jonathan. To be honest, first episode, I was a little unsure about Jonathan because I thought he was going to be too stereotypically gay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and like just totally just outrageous. And I feel like authentic, but I think that is his true authentic self. But you get. As you see him more on the show, yeah. like you get that. But like when you first see him, the beginning of the first yeah. episode, it's like, oh, Whoa. so you mean like you're worried that yeah. they kind of like, m- like made him a trope? Like, oh, yeah. like you yeah. don't yeah. really have to play up. Like, yeah, this. especially yeah. when he's doing fabulous gay. Yeah. Like, yeah. At first, I yeah. was like, oh no, you are gonna be the stereotype. Yeah. Oh god. But then, like, yeah, like I follow him on Instagram and everything now. Like, that's definitely yeah. just who he is. But at first, I was like, no, like, yeah. aren't we past these stereotypes? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the answer is no. <laughs> but then you see, so that's you actually think, who he is, and that's not like a that, trope. Does he get that like, from sure. the queer community too? Do you think? Like, oh, I'm okay, sure. Guys, I'm like, sure he a does. Bunch of shit from the queer I'm community. I'm sure he does. Oh man. Like, but like, I live for Jonathan. Like, he wears whatever the fuck he wants. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna wear this these like booties and fucking dress, and I'm gonna look hot on as shit. the red carpet. And, like, like on the red carpet. carpet. Yeah, like not just like for my Instagram followers. Like on the red carpet. It's like yeah. yeah, I'm gonna wear a fucking dress and rock it with my like big beard and mustache. Like <laughs> I don't fucking care. Like I yeah. love him. He has a He's he has so a very good. good like idea of like what he likes aesthetically, and I always find that fascinating. I love how people dress and how people present themselves. I just find that stuff really interesting. I feel like it's a bold choice because a lot of the people that they make over are like, I think in the first episode even this big like burly truck driver like, and like I all these, the truck. you know, like I guess hetero guys and yeah, it'd be a little bit guys. much I think for them. And see, I think it's funny because one of the most conservative people that they dealt with, at least like clothing wise, was a gay man yeah, on the yeah. show, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's so interesting to see because like the, the guy from the first episode episode like he looks like he's this like big burly mountain man but he's like one of the sweetest yeah. guys yeah like big and softy. he was so accepting of them from like minute one they oh yeah and he was so sad up. when they left i know yeah. Yeah, it was that episode cute. kills me because um he looks like my dad and Aww. he has lupus like yeah, my actually, mom does actually so, he does look like your um, dad it killed me when i watched that first episode yeah, i episode. wept yeah. uncontrollably i was like what yeah. is this Oh, yeah, just the mood. So, what was your favorite episode from season one? Ooh, the first okay, one was go, really good. I've got to go look at the like, first one. The first is, one yeah, was you really honestly good. the first Ugly episode really of season good. one is my favorite of both seasons. Mm, yeah, I mean, but we're only talking there. about season one. Um, I'm looking over the list again to make sure of my decision. I, um, my second one, I think, is uh, the Renaissance of Remington. What, the guy who oh, inherits yeah, his Remington. grandmother's house and they really redid. House. Yeah. Mostly because I love how Bobby redid the house. Yeah. It was yeah. He's so good at I, that. I liked Bobby when he did the house. I think it was the one with the six kids or something. Oh, camp oh yeah. I think my favorite episode was the one with the stand-up comedian because they really, I feel like they really, really turned that guy's life around for his career 
career and mm. his personal life. Like he built him that website, and then in the stand up at the beginning and the stand up at the end, it was wild. And then he asked that girl. I was just wow. It was like the whole shebang. Yeah, but like you there can't was romance, fix ugly. comedy. He, he's he went on a date with his yeah true, his ex wife. Ex wife. You know like, what? They're back together. They and got married. married. Yes. Yeah. They, they did got they invite married. the cast of Queer Eye because they were like I think things. they did. Yeah. yeah. I think they had a small wedding, but like mm-hmm. he called the Queer Eye guys like all of them and told Aww, them. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Imagine like. Like being partially responsible for getting a guy back together with like holy his crap, yeah, true love. Like, yeah. wouldn't you just shit yourself? Oh, yeah. he's so. Oh I would, god, I would. I'd be like, oh, I guess I'm getting into heaven. I love, don't need to do any more work. I love their reaction yeah. at the comedy one though, when he uh, asked the girl, when he's just yeah. like, so do you want to start dating? And then they kiss. And then, uh, what was his name? John, the long haired guy? John then was just like living. His, yeah, his like reaction where he like literally passed out, kind of like because he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like Selena did when we told Selena we were engaged. Oh, oh my god. god. That was so. <laughs> that was wholesome. That was, that was so one of my much. favorite moments of that so night. That was the best. <laughs> Maybe in a future episode we'll tell that story. But yeah. that was... <laughs> I just like live in this weird romantic. I just love romance. So Aww. much. And like anything romantic. I'm like, nice. I love romance and anything <laughs> related to romance. That's, yes. that's me! Yes. That's what you just said. Yeah, that's, but does it make sense that both of those things would. But things be that are together? romantic are part of romance. Oh my. Okay, you're right. It was redundant, okay? You win, Cosette. <laughs> okay, close the podcast. We got to the bottom of it. We got yeah. to the bottom. Okay. So, the last episode of season one is the firefighters, right? Yeah, well, that yeah. was a fun one, too. That I one was like great. One. But do you think that they showed too many clips of the guys, like, drooling over the firefighters? Like, I felt like they played it up a bit too much. I'd have to watch it again. I don't really remember I don't that. Remember. I feel like I would be doing the exact same thing. So I'm <laughs> not even kidding. Like, that was enough fire. <laughs> firemen. Yeah, 100%. I'm like, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. I, I don't was, remember. I thought it was so cool that they got like the fire hall. That was my big thing, was that they redid the fire hall. Yeah. That's oh, what I yeah. remember. Yeah, that's, like, that's that so was the best cool. part. That was amazing. Yeah. Like, Do you feel like there's a resurgence of this kind of show? Like we used to have uh, Extreme Makeover Home yeah. Edition, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's kind of like died away, and now it's like the new version of it. But yeah, like Extreme almost, Makeover yeah. Home Edition was so it was like even more dramatic than Queer Eye. I literally oh, remember yeah. watching yeah. an episode where what's that, guy- kid? You like horses? We're gonna convert <laughs> your bedroom into a stable. Look at the view. I was watching an episode, and he was like, "My interest is duct tape for some." Okay, this is what real, and they like made his whole room like out of duct tape. And they had, like, a big duct tape station, and, like, everything was duct tape. Okay. And, like, the entire, like, wow. you have to, it's, like. Something. Yeah, it's, like, Ty Pennington was out of control. <laughs> yeah, like, out of, like, out, You like, like this one thing? Let me spiral I do, I remember this there's too. so much cocaine. If the kid, like, like <laughs> just so much. No, he's got ADHD, and he actually, like, really? reps himself for it, yeah. Okay, oh, there, there, okay. there's some that's hilarious. Where I'm, like, yeah, this kid is gonna love the room for, like, a month, and then he's gonna get some new thing, like, unicorn. And then he's gonna hate well, it. Well, imagine so. your girl, you're coming over, you're the brand new girlfriend, and you go to your boyfriend's fucking duct tape murder. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd be so scared. Oh, man. You know, like, yeah. I'm not saying that. No, I am saying that duct, duct tape as an interest is not cool. I'm going to come out and say it. I'm going to take an anti-duct tape stance. Oh, here oh, we go. <laughs> That's just Selena funny. hates all the things you like. Yeah, it's duct tape. Thank I you. know. But, um, I once yeah. made a duct uh, I forget the theme song for that. I made that. Is there a theme song? Selena. What was the exact phrase? It's not hates everything you like. I don't Selena, know. Selena. I thought it was hates everything you like. I don't know. Selena Make up a hates new one. The all the things you, you love. love. Yeah. I could like duct tape as an interest, probably. Interest. I made a duct tape. No, it's pretty once. cool. Yeah, like the stuff that you can make actually is pretty cool. Have you, you ever seen the people it. who make like their prom dresses out of duct tape? Well, like that's under, pretty cool. That's I like, like fashion. The, I like yeah. That's actually like probably really difficult to. Yeah. And you can like construct but it to your under body. interests. If you wrote duct tape, I would. No. I'd be worried about you. Yeah, yeah if you were, yeah. if I was on a dating app and in your interest, you're on Dexter, you I'd be like, like, that was the no, only thing that it said in your date. No, <laughs> and then no, if their name's Dexter, you're like, no. Dexter, no, 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 no. What do you no. do in your spare time? <laughs> Duct tape. I'd be yeah, like, I'd oh, be so scared. you're going to murder me? Okay. So but I think, I think. Swipe, swipe right. Okay. <laughs> like, we need to move away from I the duct tape. I think that's what I like about 
queer eye though compared to like something like Extreme Home Makeover because like Extreme Home Makeover went way too way out overboard. whereas yeah. like the stuff that Bobby does in like their houses is just like it's basic perfect. stuff mm. stuff yeah. that they need stuff that's functional okay yeah. but I would like to point out that it is called Queer Eye not Extreme Queer Eye Extreme this is what we need to pitch to Netflix yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, listen. listen but yeah and I also think that it's what I really like about Queer Eye is they actually cover a lot of different bases like it's not mm-hmm. just like it's literally more than a makeover like I know that's really annoying but they like actually cover so many different bases to kind of get your life straightened out and like yeah. in mm-hmm. order like they cover like hey maybe let's talk about your self esteem yeah like being that, cool, like yeah. being pretty isn't gonna fix all your problems yeah. 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 yeah and you know? also like I feel like in general with men it's I'm gonna make an assumption about men get ready to be offended I feel like it's hard for men to be as emotionally vulnerable as we allow women to be yeah just because we don't toxic see... masculinity yeah there's a lot of toxic masculinity oh, and it's hard for yeah. men I feel like to no, I, I hope I hope it's getting better but I feel like it is hard for some men to allow themselves to like get to a vulnerable place where they can like look mm-hmm. at their life and like make hard choices and decisions where as if this one's kind of like a very positive masculinity where you have a bunch of guys mm-hmm. who are like hey we like taking care of ourselves and we want you to look good for yeah. your spouse so that you can be really sexy and like yeah, yeah. you know feel good about yourself remember in the fire hall when he asked uh asked tan to do up his shirt was no. that the fire hall one i can't remember oh darn wasn't it? I'm but that sounds remember. like a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're getting a little too too hot in here. But yeah. I kind of, I appreciate with Queer Eye, they showed from Bobby and Karamo and um, I guess maybe a little bit from Tan to um, just, like, their own personal struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, because, like, we had Bobby with the Kemp family and dealing with religion and... Oh, yeah his queer identity. It was tough. We yeah. had Karamo speaking to a police officer about... That was scary. Yeah, okay, I did not so... like that. I oh, did not like, like that. I did not find that funny at all. Yeah. It was... Yeah. But I think it was... I think it's kind of their way to, like, bring up the topic without making yeah. it too hard for people because they can be like, oh, look, like, this could have happened to Karamo. Yeah. And we yeah. love Karamo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it's like, okay. But then they, like, make it so people aren't like, oh, my God, what's happening? It's just... Okay, it's a good cop. Not yeah. all cop. Like yeah, I wouldn't true. say there's necessarily like a a pro cop, anti cop agenda in the episode. Mm. I think it's more just like breaching the issue and being like, hey, yeah. let's let's acknowledge this happens and like agree to try to work on something better. I was surprised tough, how yeah. much hate that like when they were in the car together talking about like those issues, there was so much hate like on the internet. People yeah. were like, oh, like it was... fuck you, Karamo, like... No, not fuck you, Karamo, just, like, that it was um... forced, that it wasn't authentic, that they shouldn't mm-hmm. have done it that way, blah, blah, blah. And but, see, like, I, I didn't think it was I didn't forced. think so either. Like, would yeah. you rather them no. not do it at all? No. Like, no. they would have been mad. Or just have like, that scene and happen. not address it, like... I know, yeah. Well, I and like, I think, I think Karamo yeah. was really authentic when he brought it up to me. He's like, yeah. your friend scared the shit out of me, because I was yeah. like, is this the day I die? he should have said, not gonna lie, I was not a fan of you at first, because that scared the me and you can totally tell like when you because of the like dash cam that's in their car like you can see Karamo's face change and he's like yeah his face I'm doing what I have to do to stay alive now like his face says everything I just Mm. thought it was really weird that he didn't have his license on him like what was yeah I mean they don't carry stuff on them because they've usually got another vehicle driving with them they'll probably have their assistant with all their stuff well not on set because you know they're traveling Uh, that's why I was like like, was that staged because there's no way you wouldn't have your wallet in the truck with you well i'm sure in that moment he was like now i'm gonna die because i don't have my license like Mm -hmm. literally he's like they'll use that to fucking kill me like yeah i'm sure in the moment he was like i'm an idiot i'm gonna die i i i i can't speak for like the americanized version of it but i know that um one of the things that my mom was working on was um this there's like a pamphlet that goes out to all the RCMP every uh we're in Canada do, do people know that yes we're in we, Canada bitches we are a um, Canadian podcast <laughs> so our like yeah. perceptions of what happens in the states um, and also yeah. like I'm not a person of color so like I don't yeah. have like I don't know what the situation is honestly like I can't do anything except for believe what people tell me 
Um, but like I know that for Canada, they try to like have this like little newsletter that goes around talking about youth every quarter to the RCMP. And my mom was working on editing one of them, and it had like a section about like queer identities and in, in interacting with the police and why it can be difficult for them. And it was an interesting attempt at like trying to educate the police force about hey, this might be difficult for these communities because of these reasons. Yeah. So like. Like, I remember Tyler and I read it over, and we had, like, a discussion with my mom about why it wasn't, like, 100%, like, as accurate as it could be. Like, it wasn't, Mm -hmm. it deviated a little bit from, like, true accuracy, um, I felt. But, like, I think the attempt to, like, recognize queer people is there. Yeah, but that wasn't really because he was queer, right? You can't tell that. Yeah, it was more because he was black. I'm just saying, like, that's the only thing I can speak to. It was 100% because he was black. Yeah. 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 So, we're just, we're basically getting at we are not Americans so we aren't as like involved in the you know whole concept of the police and black people yeah, because yeah. we don't have that as I much in like Canada. It's police and Native American it, people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, here Indigenous that's people problem is problem our is the problem here. Problems. So we can at a point mm. we can understand. So that's just mm. disclaimer. We don't know anything. We are just trying to be understanding to, yeah, to like, the situation. And and you know, I think that as people who I can't experience it directly, all we can do is believe the people that are being marginalized. Like all we can do is believe Karamo, right? Like yeah. all we can do is believe his experience. Yeah. So. But that's, I think that's what I appreciate, though, mm. is Karamo gets a chance to tell the cop how he felt. That's true. And yeah. the cop gets to say, he's like, I totally get it, but I also want people to understand, you know, not all cops want to shoot somebody. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think it's it's a very complicated, we're not going to get into it, but I'm glad that yeah. they mm-hmm. explored both mm-hmm. ideas, right, and both sides, because everybody's got their own side of what's happening. Yeah, Be it good or bad, everyone has their own side of what's happening. And I think, yeah, if they, if they were going to have the guy in there, they had to have the conversation. Oh, oh totally. Yeah, I'm sure that's yeah. why they picked him, is because they wanted to have that dialogue. Yeah. But then there was stuff like the guy who made the app, mm-hmm. I think he was Pakistani and Tan is okay. Indian. No, it's the other way around. I think. Is it? Yeah, the guy yeah, is Tan 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 Pakistani. And they were in his closet and they were looking at the dowry suitcase and they were talking yeah, about that, cool. that. That is so interesting to see like different cultural ways of like mm-hmm. how things are, especially with fashion because Tan, like that was a perfect like thing culturally and also fashion that he could like bring up and talk about, which was great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. So, I also appreciate this is one of the very few makeover shows out there, anywhere, that is not based on losing weight. Oh, I never even thought of that. Yeah. 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 Because you literally can't find a transformation show these days without it being about weight loss. Because Mm -hmm. there's only one episode where they talk about physical activity and it's the app guy and it's they took him to a boxing gym to get him to work out for his mental health yeah. Yeah. not because there was a physical goal yeah. mm-hmm. and i remember like jonathan specifically being like yeah no we like think that the way you are is just gorgeous blah 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 mm-hmm. like just did he have some pretty bad body image issues or jonathan no no the oh the i just remember, guy, I remember a lot of guys guy. mentioning that they had body image issues oh, like okay. about well it's weight. very prevalent a lot of people don't think yeah. about it that's but it's the whole it's the whole me- mentality that we need to have for regardless of of gender or anything is you just need to learn to handle the body that you're in right now mm-hmm. yeah um and that's something i think showing that especially in a format that is so readily available to the public like that's mm-hmm. really important like like i went on netflix the other day and i was looking for a show to watch and there was one called like bring sexy back and okay and, but the oh the way that it was written up made it sound like they were just working on people on the inside right. to make mm-hmm. them feel better nope weight loss show oh. totally i was like you have got to be fucking kidding me yeah you play it up on your write-up and then the first episode within the first five minutes i find out it's just a weight loss show i actually i had didn't even notice but that is so cool that i they don't ever tell them to lose weight i Mm -hmm. had no idea if they did i think i would have a really big problem i would be like why do you think it's okay well they only have five days i think that's part of the key too so or is it five days they have or something yeah something something short short yeah they're like a week or something yeah but there are plenty of shows like that where they try to address 
topics like that like within a couple of days and it's just mm-hmm. yeah that's crazy. it's just so nice to see something that's transformational without being a physical yeah. like change right yeah. yeah well i mean other than wardrobe and makeup <laughs> yeah but physical that is just outside right yeah no for sure i feel like with focus on like weight and body stuff does affect like me and it is nice to have a break from that because mm-hmm. like yeah it can get really exhausting mm-hmm. it's just nice to like, see that our Jesus. media is focused on something else for once yeah. yeah so okay so we've seen season one we're probably going to do another episode later about season two mm-hmm. season three is coming out yeah how, how excited are you for the Very, next season uh, that's gonna be good is Very. there anything you kind of any topics or like anything you kind of want to see them deal with in the next mm. season i think i just want them to continue like keep Keeping it diverse, because like yeah. the yeah. the first um the like the the original show like queer was called Queer Eye for the straight guy. So they they really kind of limiting who they're they helping. limited themselves, yeah. and so like it was like they could only do straight men. Like so now they had like you know straight men and queer men and men of color and trans men and like and, and, and a woman and a, and a, oh yeah and a woman that's right yeah. i haven't watched yeah. that episode yet yeah um but there is a woman that's right uh so i think it would be cool if they had more people that aren't men. yeah i think so too and i also like i kind of think the like narrative of like straight men don't know how to fucking do anything is really tiring and i don't think that we yeah. should be like <sighs> Just like saying, oh, let's help those street boys who can't figure their life out. Like they can do it themselves. But at the same time, majority of the makeover shows that exist are just for women. That's true. Yeah. So I think I think it's nice to have a positive platform for men. That's true. To experience the same sort of like. I think as long as they're helping people that really need it, because that's Mm. what I really like to see is where they're starting and where they're ending. So as long as that change is like drastically for the better, I think I'd be down. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I'm in it for. No, but I, I think that the like the group of people that they've helped has been really yeah, oh good. yeah, for so sure. Far. Oh yeah, yeah. So just keep it up. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that that's a very nice little discussion about season one. We'll have to do one on season two. Heck yeah. Um, Is there anything else you guys want to add? I think that, um, guess what? I think that, oh yeah, I I did want to add, like, it's definitely they give a great lens for people who don't have any um, idea for queer issues. Like, I think with our friend group... We have, I'm guessing, more awareness than maybe other friend groups. I don't know. On average. On average than, like, about about queer issues. But I'm sure that it's, like, a great... Because it's such an accessible, fun, like, positive show. I'm mm-hmm. sure it would help people be like, oh, like, Karamo was super cute and nice. So now I don't have to, like... I can just make the assumption that every queer person is super cute mm-hmm. and nice. Or, yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I butchered that real bad. Do you know what I'm trying to... We what am I trying you. to say? Yeah, yeah, we, we got, got you. you. No, no, we got okay. you. Okay. Yes. It's... It's because it's so accessible and cute, it allows like queer people to like just be seen as people, which is nice. Cool. I think Bra- I think that's a good part Bra- to go out on. Yeah. So thank you everybody for being here today. Yeah, um, yeah. If you like today's episode, please go rate and review and subscribe on all platforms. We are at Darling Dorks Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. You can email questions, comments, or ideas to darlingdorkspodcast at gmail.com. We also want to thank tech wizard Tyler. Tyler! And please go check out his YouTube channel, Fourth Wall Creations, to check out all the stuff he has going on there. And if you enjoy the sitcom, which you should be watching, go subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. You will see some of your favorite Darling Dorks on there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So we will see you all next time. So in the meantime, stay darling and stay wonderful. Wonderful dorks. Bye. Bye. Don't Bye. Google Twink. <laughs> don't don't yeah, Google that's Twink. That's true. Actually, don't. Carmen is dark for life. Oh, life <laughs> the Darling Dorks podcast is produced by Fourth Wall Creations, the avocado on a plate of Canadian YouTube. Music for Darling Dorks was made by Showbiz, who are releasing their debut album Illusion this upcoming spring. Thanks for listening.